Hey, it's a Hubble Collector here, and in today's video, we have a uh, pretty big unboxing. A uh, good variety of stuff here, some German stuff, some American stuff. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. I'm pretty sure it's all World War II this time. Uh, so this first item here is another death card. I actually haven't bought any more death cards in a while. wonder why. But this is a very interesting one. So, as we can see here, uh, George Voninger. This gentleman right here, and you'll notice something very strange right off the bat. There isn't any prayers on this. There isn't a cross, there isn't a reference to Jesus or Mary. And instead we have a rune. Now, I'll tell you what, I've been browsing eBay looking at death cards for probably over a year now. Like daily. Not, not like occasionally, but daily. I've never seen a death card like this. And apparently, what the rune here signifies is that, is that uh, George's father... Uh, was most likely in the SS, and this is kind of something that they used to mark their cards. So he, George himself, I don't think, was. I'll have to do some research on that, but apparently his father or someone in his family was. Now, obviously this could be a reprint. I have a black light here. That's probably not going to show up too well. So, for comparison, we have uh, my note paper for my last death card video, and that other death card. Um, and I will admit, I don't have a lot of experience with the blacklight test, so if I'm doing this wrong or something looks off, please let me know. Uh, here we got the blacklight. You can see how the paper there is glowing. I'm not seeing anything that's imme immediately raising any red flags. Like I said, though, I'm not super familiar with doing the, de the blacklight test on paper. Uh, so if I'm doing it wrong, these are both fake, let me know, because even the, the Caucasus Spanish one is a little suspect. But to me, at least, I mean, that seems fine. But like I said, I, I don't know. If I'm doing the test wrong, please let me know so I can correct that for the future. Um, but if it is real, uh, it is certainly a very, uh, very interesting card, for sure. Definitely the first one like it that I have. So pretty happy with that. I'll put it back in its uh, protective sleeve here for now. You, uh, you can never have too many death cards. There we go. All right, so the next package that we have here, some more uh, photographs from one of my regular uh, sellers, if you recognize from the envelope here. Alrighty, so what do we got? Okay, I think that's everything. So, let me open up this envelope here. Alright, so we got on a runway there. I don't have my phone on me, so I can't look up these photos like I've done in previous videos. So we've got a crash site there, no caption. And then this photo is really interesting. So it appears to be... Can I get it focus? Come on. Uh, it appears to be German and Soviet airmen in the, uh, the same chow line there. And unfortunately, no caption. So I can't really... Tell what's going on here. Yeah, if anybody has any info on that, please let me know. It could be like pre-war training, because I know the Luftwaffe did some training over in the Soviet Union. Um, so maybe that's it. Uh, I don't really know, but uh, any info on that would be appreciated. Ooh, next up we have two items in here. And uh, one of them is, well, more photos, because I have a problem. Uh, and the other one is a very interesting book. Okay. All right, let's 
everything in that box. So I guess we'll start with this one on. Alrighty. I believe this is the photos, actually. Best way to get in here, let's see. I'm gonna just cut in right there. Okay. We'll admit this photo album is a tad smaller than I thought it looked based off the auction. But I know there's some pretty good photos in there, so I'm okay with that. And frankly, I don't have a lot of room at the moment anyway, so smaller is probably better. But yeah, pretty uh, pretty neat. So all the photos are captioned. I'll have to go through here later and make scans of everything, translate everything. But the handwriting is at least very clean. I shouldn't have any issues uh, translating that. I know there's some good field shots. I remember seeing a couple tanks in the auction, but they didn't have all the photos listed. Overdone. Tool. It's pretty neat. Let's see barracks. Look at all that artillery. Oh, an English armored car. I wonder if that was captured post uh, Dunkirk. We got a mine too. Oh, a synagogue in Poland. It's pretty interesting. If I remember correctly, and I don't know where it is in here, but I do remember seeing a photo of a T-28. Which would be pretty neat to see. Crim, a lot of Crimea, 1941. That looks like that's where the photos end. Wonder what happened to this guy? Yeah, probably never know. Yeah, very interesting. So yeah, I'll do a complete scan of that eventually. Um, best way to open this next one. Now, this is kind of interesting because this is actually a wartime published German book, um, which I don't see a lot of here in the U.S. This one was kind of an interesting topic. So even though it's in German, and I'm almost certainly never going to get around to translating it, I thought it was kind of neat, so I wanted to, and for the price, couldn't really say no. I think I paid 20 for it. So you can see we got a nice Kriegsmarine award there. I think is that the destroyer badge? I think it is, because it's a book about destroyer, so that, that makes sense. Um, yeah, Z-13. This was actually written by the uh, boat's chief engineer. Uh, from Kiel to Narvik, I believe. But yeah, pretty interesting. You can see it's published here in 1941. It's good wartime publishing. I think there's actually a photo of the engineer in here somewhere, which I'm trying to find. I think that's him. Or is that the, the ship's commander? But yeah, apparently they got sunk sometime in 41. Oh, look at that, though. That's a nice 
fold out maps there. Is there any neat photos I wonder? Oh, there's another fold out. That's pretty cool. I didn't know the fold outs were in here, so that that's pretty sweet. That's what we just looked at. Yeah, pretty interesting stuff though. Now, I wonder if there's a translation of this book, or maybe a modern reprint, because be, I'd be curious to read it actually. But it would take far, far too much time to try to translate this. But yeah, overall though, pretty pretty cool looking book, especially with the spines going apart, but especially the cover I thought was neat. Hmm. So I'll move on to this package. <laughs> this large square. Um, this, this is actually some US stuff, which is neat. Um, so this is a set of documents from actually here in uh, the good old Keystone State. Uh, which is why I picked these up, because I thought, well, A, they were interesting, B, they were PA-related, and C, they weren't a lot of money. Um, nobody bid on them, I was able to make an offer, and I thought got a decent deal on it. Um, Okay. Good use of cling wrap there. Okay. So these, this packet, if we can get it out of the cling wrap. Why would you, why cling wrap? That's my question. It's just gonna stick to everything. There we go, okay. All right, so this envelope here. It's badly faded as it is, has some pretty neat documents. Uh, so here, We have a tank built by the AC&F Company of Burwick, Pennsylvania, which I found out when I saw this auction, did some research, was the sole producer of the Stort light tank during World War II for the US. And this set of documents was given out to employees of the plant for the last tank that was made there. The 1,524th Stuart built April 17th, 1944. Uh, which I will read to you as follows. Uh, American Car and Foundry Company, Berwick, 6, Pennsylvania. Uh, fellow employees of ACF. The last tank, the 15,224th, rolled from the assembly line on April 17th. It was a job well done and offers a challenge to the one that lies ahead. For there can be no let up from our labors until the last shot is fired and the piece is won. You men have built reliability into the tanks that have gone out from these shops, and you may well be proud of your accomplishments. Berwick-built tanks have fought on every battlefield in this global war. They were with the British 8th Army in the earliest days of desert fighting in Libya, with General Montgomery's troops in their historic pursuit of Rommel in his 1,500 miles flight across Africa, and leading the victorious 8th Army in its triumphal march in Tripoli. They joined the first American forces with the British in North Africa after the Casablanca landings and were storming the beaches at Salerno. In the Pacific, they landed with the Marines on Guadalcanal and the Solomons, on Buna, New Guinea, and served with the Aussies in the land down under. <laughs> okay. Uh, high up in the Arctic Circle, they fought in the Aleutians with the Russians and the Caucasus before Stalingrad, and in Brazil, they helped to guard the gateway to the South Atlantic. The tanks that you have built here in Berwick are now gathering all over the world in preparation for the D-Day that will dawn, with Eisenhower getting ready to storm the fortress that is Europe, and with MacArthur and his march to the Philippines and on to Tokyo. Uh, note the spelling of Tokyo there. Uh, your task of building these tanks is ended, but another job lies definitely ahead to build the new equipment that will blaze the trail and smooth out the troubled path to peace. Now let me express my per personal appreciation for the part you have played in our success to date and request continuation of your cooperation in the future. Uh, cordially yours, uh, I'm going to say that's Guy C. Beischlein, District Manager. But yeah, pretty neat. Um, other side of the state for me, but still, I thought that was pretty pretty cool. I didn't know that the storts were all built here in PA, so that kind of makes it more interesting to me. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, no provenance on who the 
uh, soldier was who would have, or soldier, who the plant employee was who would have been uh, given this in the first place. Uh, but still, very, very neat piece, I thought. All right, and last but certainly not least, um, we have a nice U.S. Uh, tech manual. which uh, was offered to me by a gentleman that I, I've worked with many, many times, bought from many, many times. Um, every now and then he'll get something in and he'll give me first dibs, which is nice. That's one of the nice things about the hobby, like I've said before, is building up a relationship with different dealers and things. I believe that's the only thing in there. So that is good. A lot, of, a lot of plastic bags this episode. We're getting near the 20 minute mark, so I'm going to have to stop or try to keep filming. Oh, there's a uh, postcard here. Ah, thank you from the uh, seller. This is a modern postcard of the Titanic, so still pretty neat. But yeah, check this out. This is a manual for the Sperry machine gun turrets. This is the service and overhaul manual. Uh, belonged to a guy named Jenkins. Um, so we can see here, nice uh, July 1942 manual for the Sperry ball turrets, actually. And there should be some good pictures in here somewhere. Maybe. Yeah, so you can see there. As I drop it. Um, yeah, check that out. It's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, he gave me a pretty fair price on this, I would say. But yeah, it's got all the fold outs and all of this. That's really cool. So if anybody's rebuilding a Sperry Ball turret to like <laughs> and has questions, um, I might be able to help you out. Paper is very uh, fragile, though. But yeah, this is very similar. I bought a uh, lot recently, probably like in the past year, that had like the wiring manual for a B-26 Mitchell. Um, so I saw this manual. I was like, oh, that's cool. I like all these old technical blowouts. Like, look at that. I can make posters out of those, actually. Oh, there you go. There's a nice photo of a ball turret. Very cool. Uh, but yeah, overall, pretty good... A uh, couple of lots from the past few weeks. Got the Sperry turret manual there. Uh, documents relating to the Stort tank production. A book on a German destroyer. Photo album with some very interesting photos in it. I'm looking forward to getting scanned in. Uh, a couple photos and a very odd death guard. Uh, so yeah, hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, please leave a comment down below. Love hearing from you guys. Uh, thank you all for watching. Happy collecting. And I'll see you all again very soon.